Herkese merhaba. Ben Hayrettin Günç. Kontraktın pek ortalarda görünmeyen, gerçek olup olmadığına dair spekülasyonların yapıldığı üçüncü eleman olarak size bugün Amerika'nın Cambridge şehrinden sesleniyorum. Yanımda bugün bu sene stüdyolarına katıldığım Ekosistema Urbana ofisinin kurucuları Jose Luis Vallejo ve Belinda Tato var. Um, mimarlığa ilgi duyan dinleyicilerimiz Ekosistema Urbano ismini daha önce duymuş olabilirler. E, 2000 senesinden beri dünyanın farklı noktalarında gerçekleştirdikleri deneysel projelerle aslında mimarlık dünyasının ilgisini çokça çekmişlerdi. E, kendilerini ve yaklaşımlarını kentsel sosyal tasarımcı e, olarak tanımlıyorlar. E, bu yaptıkları projelerin yanında bir yandan da farklı üniversitelerde gerçekleştirdikleri stüdyolarla ve atölyelerle de mimarlığın eğitimi anlamında da farklı deneyler gerçekleştiriyorlar diyebiliriz. Bu, bu sürecin aslında belki de son en sondaki halkalarından biri de Harvard Graduate School of Design'de gerçekleştirdikleri Network Urbanism adlı stüdyo serisiydi. Ben de bu sene e, onların Bahreyn'de e, gerçekleştirdikleri bu stüdyonun bir parçasıydım. Kendileriyle bugün tasarım işlerinin dışında kalan çok da belki konuş, konuşulmayan tasarım eğitimiyle ilgili ve tasarım eğitiminin geleceğiyle ilgili e, konuları tartışacağız. Şimdi kendilerine dönüp İngilizce devam ediyorum. Okay, so um, thank you so much once again for being here. Um, I already made a quick introduction in Turkish and I assume many people in Turkey are all already familiar with your work. But today, like I, like, like we told, um, I really want to talk more about the, the design education and your experience in, in, in design education. Um, You've been teaching in many different parts of the world. You've been teaching in um, Spain, um, in Italy, in here in the United States. And um, for the last couple of years, we are um, seeing your work here in Harvard Graduate School of Design. Um, I, I would like to start um, with your own uh, individual design education experience, actually. Um, I remember when I was talking with Jose, uh, he he told me the story about how he was accepted and how how it was kind of a radical transition from um, Polytechnic School of Madrid to to Bartlett in in England, uh, which which can be regarded as one of the most experimental um, schools in the world. So yeah, like the first first question that I have is. How how was your own design education? How and how does your own individual experiences affect the way you uh, structure your your own studios? Well, we started in Madrid, which is a great school, and or at least it was uh, during the nineties when we were students. So there was a lot of most professors were practitioners and very good practitioners. It was a time that there was a lot of construction going on in our country. You know, all the new infrastructures, museums, schools and buildings, you know, institutional buildings and everything. So we had a lot of, we were kind of surrounded with by a lot of good architecture. So it was it's a very it was a very inspirational moment, but everything was of course regarding the built environment and the built kind of objects. So it was, you know, we at that point we understood that architecture was, you know, was only about that. Whereas when, when we came to the Barlet, it was a completely different experience because the school over there, uh, as you said, it, it's very experimental, but also the understanding of architecture is much more kind of diluted. It's not, so I, I remember this first comment from our professor was like, wow, your portfolio is, you know, it's all right, but it's, it's very architectural. And mm-hmm. he's like, well, you know, we, I, I really didn't understand the comment at that point. It's like, of course, you know, I'm an architect. I mean, what, how, what is it supposed to be? So there was a kind of a huge gap in terms of um, concept and understanding of the profession, but also in terms of media and means of experimentation, because 
Again, in Madrid we were producing all the time building sections, building plans, building uh, volumes and models, whereas at the parlor was more about this developing concepts and experimental models that uh, about this kind of innovative concept. So they were not so attached to the constructive kind of uh, environment. Can we can we say that um, the way that you structured your um, studios now can we relate them to your experience back then? Are they are there some moments that you you find um, common in those both processes? Yes, I would I would say more maybe it's like about some of the let's say like some of the tools we use. It's like it's more that idea of promoting uh, creativity than because uh, I mean right now. That experience at the ballet was for us like kind of uh, super intense because it was a super dif different environment than in the School of Architecture Maria, as, Bel as Belinda was saying before. It was like, a, I would say, like at that moment was super shocking, but then uh, some years later we understood about how our also our approach to architecture changed by that kind of experience. It was not that we thought, it, okay. We had uh, this kind of super technical uh, approach in Madrid, and then we have to change to something more creative. But in a way, we we were um, shaping our our way to look into architecture and to urban issues um, through that kind of a mixture between those kind of two the two super different environments. No, so maybe at this at this point, I would say like our approach to teaching right now is much more. Um, let's say, hands-on than, than uh, at the Barlet or at the School of Architecture of Madrid, in the sense that we are dealing with super real issues that are affecting uh, urban environments. And maybe at the Barlet they are um, very uh, uh, connected to the, as Verena was saying, to the conceptual world and to be hands-on with, but just working with concepts. But on the other side, there is like a part of our approach which is connected to be, being an actor in the in the real uh, uh, urban environment in which we can work a lot with creativity, you know, it's like that's something absolutely important in the way we approach uh, teaching also. I think that's something that I am also really interested in. And when when you were guests in my one of my lectures last year, you were mentioning. I remember you were saying um, how design education was too much focusing on the end product. It didn't really embrace the collaborative working um, spirit yet, and by the, by looking at the projects developed in your studio, I can say you're trying this kind of part from participants to break the walls of academia and explore the real world. And could you elaborate on the tools or some of the methods that you use to hack these boundaries of the academia? Like how how do you encourage students to get out of the school? Well, I think it's pretty, for, for me, or, uh, you know, as I see it, it's like, it's pretty obvious there's so many challenges, so many problems out there that sometimes I feel, I feel a bit frustrated when universities make up new problems. It's like, okay, let us think in the case we had to design a platform in the moon, which is great, but why don't we try to address the real problems and, and that are there? These are fascinating. And, and it's so exciting also when we actually manage to come up with real solutions for the real problems. So... You know, we always like to say that, uh, you know, the most successful thing that we can achieve is to get a student working with the real world and actually developing the project after the semester is over, after the GSD is over, after whatever school. So we find fascinating that it's not only a way of addressing problems, it's also about finding kind of inspiration in the real world to, to come up as, as an entrepreneur with, with an idea of what to do next, you know, because sometimes the problems are so artificial and so made up and so coordinated by the coordinator that actually you are not letting the students to develop their own interest mm -hmm. in a, in a, within the studio time, which is a kind of a pity of, uh, you know. So we, we like to, to, you know, to create the environment and the atmosphere and the framework for people to develop their own projects, which is a kind of a connection between their interest and society's interest. No, and also it's a matter of, uh, as you were saying, it's like, really believe in the in the power of the process uh, and that's super important for a um, pedagogic uh, experience no usually there are many teachers that approach a studio with the sense that they have to produce something uh, beautifully designed super fast and that's 
in, in that sense they reduced the amount of uh, uh, the amount of problems within the brief mm -hmm. you know we re we really feel like uh, students should address or sometimes it's very difficult but the students should address all the complexity or, of urban issues no so in the case for example we are this year we have been uh, working in in Bahrain which, which is uh, uh, that that super small country in the Persian Gulf which is uh, in, and in that sense we are working with huge amount of uh, different issues that are affecting the the creation of public space it's not only political but it's also a matter of gender it's also a matter of religion it's so many things uh, together that sometimes you feel that um, maybe there is a, a a way in which we can approach that a bit more simplified but in a sense uh, i feel like the the pedagogic experience is is uh, if you if you reduce the amount of variables that the, the student had to work with in a way we are losing something which is the complexity of the of the city itself no? and it also happens in the practice as well it's not like architects all the time waiting in their offices for a customer to show up with a budget and, and project so they can they can work we see increasing amount of architects or designers just finding their own projects solving some problems defining those problems i think defining the problem is becoming one of the most important parts of of the of the process and mm -hmm. like jose was saying maybe it should be part of the studio experience right like the studio shouldn't give the brief to to the student for like or define how many square meters they want or maybe but problem finding should be also part of it but in a way this is this creates like a paradoxical situation because we don't have so much time for studios like yes. maybe five months or six months at most and um, we want to focus our energy on design Production, part yeah. yeah so how can like what would be the alternative way of structuring these um, like maybe it's not semesters it's also related to this idea of taking the project uh, extending the project after the studio is over but at the same time I'm thinking if there is alternative ways to structure it in a way that in a semester you define the problem and another semester you start engaging with uh, the reality and maybe another year you design something you experiment prototype it you experiment it mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, you know, I, I understand your con kind of concern, which is a general concern. It's like, you know, and sometimes we actually, you know, most of our students actually enjoy the experience, but of course there's always a few of number who are more reluctant to, to, to be proactive. It's like, okay, no, no, no, I don't want to think of my grief. Just give it to me, which is frustrating for us. But uh, I, I would like to say that, um, you know, education is not only about learning about processes, but also about critical and about having a kind of... A, raising awareness about reality, the world issues, and so on. So in order to create this kind of uh, critical uh, spirit, you have to train it somehow. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, as you were saying, how can you structure that? Well, you can structure it so many ways because there is undergraduate education and there is graduate education and there's so many studios, you know. You know, at, uh, this, you know, architecture um, degrees are like, take, I don't know, how long? Four years, five, Four years, years. five years. So there's space for everything. So there will be studios which are like, you know, let us train doing this. How everybody's going to do housing or public space or public buildings, and we, we can all learn the techniques, the, mm -hmm. the skills, the, you know, the whatever, uh, you know, mm -hmm. knowledge about it. But of course, there has to be some also space for thinking mm -hmm. and for reflecting and for being critical and not just assuming that the brief you are giving for the rest of your life is going to be good because maybe you can come up with an alternative. So I think, you know, for me that is not a conflict at all because, you know, you have a lot of time for, for both to happen and I understand, you know, of course you have to acquire the skills but at the same time there has to be space for the other part. And also it's not that bad to have a super brief experience in which you are trying to deal with all that complexity but also, uh, uh, let's say, at the end but, but not that at the end you should come up with, with something, uh, I mean, a design proposal, which is uh, connecting many things that you have been dealing with, but also it's like a, um, 
let's say, a, a first approach through design to the all the issues you are dealing with. And, and I think that's, that's very interesting because also, I mean, as designers, we have to be able to to, to, to, to brief all that complexity into, into something which is going to be like act in that kind of situation and create like new dynamics. And that's a way also it's like we usually um, uh, find that w w we approach design as something final and also design can be seen as something in also a process in, you can, in which you can produce uh, let's say solutions in, in process also. It's like and learn from the implementation or from just the the test of that kind of very first solution placed in the urban environment and see what happened and learn from that and and and make another uh, proposal so maybe it's also a matter of defining kind of uh, more flexible and more temporal uh, kind of design uh, solutions that can help us to understand better uh, that kind of complexity that we can find in, in urban environments I want to come back to this idea of um, extending the studio experience so studio doesn't end with the final presentation but somehow the students uh, take their ideas and bridges the gap between the design and implementation because from our, my experience yesterday the studio review you through the studios you create this network of people from practice pe people from academia like every studio review becomes this think tank sessions where we discuss the projects and improve it and there are some really good ideas actually mm -hmm. which can be uh, applied to the to process so um, and in your from your studio experience there were some examples who didn't stay like didn't stop at uh, at that point when uh, after the final presentation and took mm -hmm. their ideas to to implementation you know, well, I think, uh, you know, the level of engagement you have when you are really happy with the project or product that you are developing is very high. So, of course, maybe you are committed. Not every, You know, there's some people who try it and then, you know, they get distracted with the next semester with a new employment or something and maybe they, you know, even if they're interested, they have to quit it. But some of the people really persist on it and it's, it's always very nice. Like, every semester we got a meeting with a former student who actually managed to, you know, to push it forward and to, you know, to move forward. And I, I think that's fascinating. As I was saying before, that's our main success mm -hmm. at the school. It's like because you know, because of the studio, you know, it, it was very funny because a student of ours last year, we were in, in the studio, we were promoting a lot of video making. So there was a lot of people doing videos for the first time. So she wrote us, uh, you know, three weeks ago. It's like, I would like to have your support because I'm applying for some funds because actually my actual employment or you know I'm, I'm self-employed, but I'm doing. Um, movies on urban issues in um, Mongolia, in Mongolia <laughs> which is like, wow, you know, uh, it yeah. makes sense. It makes the whole, as he said, you know, I'm, I, I very much appreciate it. You opened my eyes because I, I'm doing something that I, that I love and I would have never thought that this would be the kind of my career. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm a planner. So that kind of males is like, you know, it's like, give us a lot of breathing. It's like, wow, it makes sense, you know, because of course, sometimes when you're trying to introduce new things, new tools, people struggle, we all struggle, we, you know, Cairo, you know, that we yeah. all struggle at some point, but, uh, but of course, there is also some surprises in the end, and there's people, and we also, I also had a meeting with another student from, uh, also from last year, and their project was about creating a tool with geo-reference information, I mean, it was a very kind of powerful tool, of course, they couldn't manage to do it fully within the semester, but he kept on working, he kept, you know, he, he had faith on it, he uh, teamed up with some software developers and they actually finished it, you know, a month ago. Mm -hmm. And he was super satisfied because it's like, it makes sense, you know, I've put all this energy, but it really makes sense because it is meaningful. Yes, um, I would add only, it's like, I would say that it is always a matter of engagement. So that's why also we start our courses at first, trying to know better, a bit more about, uh, let's say, personal life of each, like the personal view of each uh, student in the group, because we really feel that there are like, a, you, it happens a lot in uh, uh, for architects that we, there is like, we are completely dissociated. Is that a word in English? Dissociated? Like, it's like, uh, we are architects in one part of us, but we have forgotten about many other things that we are interested with 
that we could mix with the, the idea of being an architect. No? An architect with interest in something else that we are really interested in, in our, let's say, in our life when we are not be, uh, behaving as architect. No? Because usually what happens is like architecture is, is uh, uh, we are educated in such a strong way that we always forget about everything else. Mm -hmm. And we think um, is, it should be more about that. Um, in a way, we have to look into us see what, what are our interests and make an intersection between, between our interests and society needs, in, mm -hmm. a, in a sense. And that, I would say, that's, if, we, if we manage to work in that kind of uh, issues that are affecting us directly, but are affecting also uh, a society, and if we are able to, to find that those kind of intersections are the most powerful, uh, we have the most powerful engaged uh, people in those kind of processes. Mm -hmm. That's always what we try. What we try to search. In a way, I feel that educators also don't want to leave their comfort zone and the things that you're saying, saying like engaging with the social part of the process is is tricky and you, you don't know what's going to happen and it's risky. So and in a studio process, like you, when you don't know what's going to be the output, you're kind of hesitant to uh, to enter a process like that. So, and you are defining a different role for an educator in that is more like a, let's say, a, like a social activist way, like dominating the the, the, the structure of, of the of the studio. Like, how, how would you define the role of the educator then? Like, and what are the challenges for educators to bring those, those um, social values to the studios? Well, I think the, one of the constraints, as you were saying before, is the time frame of a studio. A studio is very short, and of course, opening up to kind of something that you don't control is really scary. And at mm -hmm. some points, you know, at some points there is panic moments in the studio when, when we have been, not in this studio this year, but in previous ones, that we are really opening up to the community, to the local, and so you are establishing connections, and which is exciting, but at the same time, the times you know, of reality are different to the types of the studio. So it's really challenging. But at the same time, if you manage to create something, it's really powerful. And it makes, you know, it, it really inspires everybody because it's like we're really working for something that makes sense, for somebody that makes sense. So again, it's about, well, it's it about also, taking the risk. <laughs> it also brings huge responsibility, I think, like when you work with realities, there are expectations, like yes, when you engage absolutely, with them. And yes. Um, yes, and we always have that, that kind of discussion with the students. It's like they, there is a moment in which, in which they are really a, afraid about going, I mean, keep on going in the same direction, contacting real people and start to work with them because they feel they are not going to be able to address the whole complexity. And that sometimes is going to be like also that idea of the expectations. No, we always have that kind of... Uh, Debates uh, within the the frame of, uh, the frame of the studio, but I always think is like it's not only about the uh, obviously the, there are many expectations, but also it's like a learning process for the for the student. This is also a matter of activating people in that kind of uh, interest. Mm -hmm. no? So in that sense, even if it, if the the period of the of the studio can be short, but if you manage to activate those kind of interests, it's something is gonna it's like a um, or something which is gonna uh, go with with uh, this person, with the students in in the rest of their life. Uh, I would say it's like opening the, the eyes to that kind of complexity, and thinking that just dealing with. Uh, I, I always say that usually we, in order to simplify the the problems, architect we deal with, uh, we we we better prefer to deal with dead materials as wood or stone more than uh, alive materials as mm. people. No? That's why all the uh, images in the architectural magazines, uh, we do not see any, any person, we do not see any people, no? because people move and maybe they have opinions and maybe their opinions are different to, to your opinions mm -hmm. and it's not so comfortable sometimes. But that's a learning process that we have to learn. It's like we are working for people. It's like we do we cannot put that on on the side. It's like we cannot uh, separate our work for, from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I completely agree, and I I think it's one of the biggest challenges of the future of design education: how to reorient itself to answer and to address those needs. Um, so the next 
thing that I want to talk about is the some of the digital tools and the skills. You you mentioned though that girl who went to Mongolia and started working there, and that's definitely related to her experience in the studio and how she started learning new tools and she f pushed herself to learn new new tools and um, I, I remember myself when I was in second year in my undergrad we had this professor he was like he was very old school and 65 years old and the first day of the classes he said you won't you can't use CAD software, just bring me hand drawings. Um, which was an interesting challenge, like for us. I, I was kind of, um, um, I don't know if I was happy with that, but what, what ended up was we were drawing in CAD, printing it, really? and tracing it afterwards, <laughs> like every class. Really? Yeah. Um, in a way, I like it's hacking, hacking the system. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we we didn't have so much time. To, yeah. I mean, we started drawing with the hand, but it ended up looking very shitty, and we had to um, speed up the process. Speed up the process. <laughs> In a way, this year, for, like from my experience here, GIFs was kind of a similar approach. Like, yes. we we were working with these animated images, and and we were not really interested with the still images which we are used to. Mm -hmm. um, and in the end, I, I noticed like it's it's it's not only the the final thing that final thing that you create, but it's a way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And you were saying like architecture is not dead, like not still. So in a way, it forces you to think about the the the activity or or the the time, time, frame. The yeah. time frame. So that brings that thing. And GIF as a simple tool is like very powerful. Very, very powerful. Um, so, can you talk more about these digital tools, how, how they can change this um, design education and how they can become part of the communication between designers and um, the final users or users in general, or society? I, I would say also it's like, it's a lot also about sharing uh, knowledge and about sharing the world. It's like the conventional uh, um, means of teaching architecture are I mean, are not made for this moment in which we are living, in which I think that also that idea you mentioned is like breaking the walls of the academy. If we manage to to share all what we produce, because there is a huge amount of energy coming from the students, that, from my perspective, in a sense, is lost because we are not able to, uh, I mean, I mean like the conventional way of, of educating, which is everywhere, in every... Uh, uh, this is something that amazed me, is like I feel... I, I was educated in the 90s and I feel the academia of, of architecture has not evolved from that. It's like an, it's an structure which is coming from 19th century, like studios in the sense of the, the, the, the professor as a master and the, the students as, as uh, learning from that, uh, that, um, that master. No? Mm -hmm. So I, I really feel that we have a lot of new tools that can help us to to share directly uh, uh, the work we produced in, in, in an academic environment which can be super valuable for for the for the world for for I mean in order to to to have a uh, different point of view about an, an urban issue about anything it's like we have to start working as we said before it's like with real issues it's like we I think the, the reality is so challenging that if we start to work with real issues and we start to share directly the work we produce and that's something very powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's connected also to the way we try to engage the students to, to share their, their, all the, the, the documents they, they produce. No? So printed drawings is not something that we can share with the world. But PDFs, videos, uh, etc., uh, a blog, uh, uploading all the information that we produce is something that, in a sense, is also part of 